Let's just see how fast I can clear, I don't know, 20 rounds with the uh, SCAR 20. All right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that feels great. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms here at Take Aim Training and Range, here to talk about everybody's favorite special operations combat assault rifle, the SCAR-17, or is it the SCAR-20, or is it the SCAR-16, which we all know and love and is a great suppressor host, chambered in 5.56, soft recoil, accurate, shoots really, really well. We know the difference between the 5.56 SCAR-16 and the 7.62 SCAR-17, but what's the big difference between the 17 and the 20? I mean, they're both 7.62 NATO, so they can't be all that big of a difference, or are they both 7.62 NATO? Let's talk about it really quick, because the SCAR-17, which has been around since 2009-ish, uh, has seen quite a bit of service all throughout the world. This is kind of everybody's favorite modular battle rifle. I mean, through pop culture and everything else, this thing has just been famous. And, well, rightfully so. This is a pretty awesome rifle. A lot of people kind of, like, don't like it. They think maybe it's got a little too much hype and that's probably because they just haven't shot it all that much right well here's the thing it's a lightweight 308 or 76 tornado battle rifle which could also be in turn with a shorter barrel when a silencer makes a great combination or you go for a little bit longer barrel you can turn it into that dmr roll and then the scar 20 entered the chat a couple years later, after the SCAR-17, you had a lot of special operators out there that wanted something that had a little bit more precision, right? They wanted something that had a little bit more punch, not quite that much, but a little bit more punch out to greater distances, and so the SCAR-20 kind of came into play. The 20-inch barrel, cold hammer forged, thicker barrel offered some great accuracy. FN also decided to pair it with the Surefire Pro Comp, which is your two-chamber brake, which really cuts down on felt recoil. The brake that comes on the SCAR-17 does just fine, and you'll notice that, but there's something truly, I guess you could say, sweet about the Pro Comp by Surefire. Coming back a little bit further, you're going to notice as well, if we compare it to the 17, the receivers are actually quite a bit different. It's not just overall a longer rail, which yes, it has, but the, the receiver itself is actually in how the barrel mounts into the system. Well, you'll notice the lockup is, where is it, right here, is significantly longer, right? Instead of the two bolts or two uh, set screws here, you actually have three, and it really, well, you got a few more, but the two, the three that you actually see instead of the Allen screws, those ones really do offer a little bit more precision, I guess you could say, a tighter tolerance, tighter lockup, all right? Now, you'll also notice these are the later models, non-reciprocating charging handles, thank God, right? Okay, so it's got a longer barrel, 20 inch, got it. Uh, it's got a different brake. Okay, cool, not that big of a deal because you can just switch that off for any other type of brake out there or any other type of muzzle device. Still utilizes the adjustable short stroke piston driven system, which is awesome. You'll notice the longer rail just has it cut out here so that way you can still get to it. The shorter rail on the SCAR 17 does leave it exposed and you'll notice that we did actually swap the rail out to be more of a longer M-lock rail instead of the shorter Picatinny, which would end right here. Uh, what does that do for weight? It is super light, which is nice, um, but the Picatinny rail spaces here are actually like polymer, so they're not all that heavy anyway, so I don't think it really matters in that sense, okay? Coming back, where does the SCAR-20 differ even further? Obviously the stock. You do have an adjustable comb height and length of pull, so this can kind of come out, this can kind of come up, and you have a similar type of setup here. Obviously the stock can pull out here, and then you have an adjustable cheek riser here, which is up position, down position. So it's nowhere near as adjustable as what the fixed precision stock is on the SCAR-20. And notice I said fixed. We all like the SCAR-17 because you can kind of do this here and now you've got this nice little compact boy, right? Sure. <laughs> well, you lose that folding capability 
with the SCAR 20. They, when I talked with them, they said that the reason they decided to go with a fixed position stock like this is since this rifle is all about precision, they didn't want to take away from any tolerances. They wanted to make sure that your eye relief and your positioning of your eye on the optic is always going to be the same, that they don't want there to be any room for error which is funny because their most precise rifle that they don't make anymore, the FN Ballista, did have a side folding stock. It's, anyway, okay, cool. So what else? The grip it comes with, the Hogue Overmold grip, finger grooves, very comfortable, very ergonomic, that's nice. Uh, but again, that's also a quick replacement, as is the trigger, which is that Super Scar Geisley trigger, two stage, phenomenal trigger. This is one of my favorite triggers uh, on any rifle, honestly. It feels great, short, crisp, reset, and I'll just go ahead and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. All right, Geisley Super Scar Trigger. You'll notice that I've got just a very short take up before I hit an obvious wall, and then that drops. Boom. Round goes down range, reset. Ready for this? Barely anything. You're talking about four pounds. It is a fantastic trigger, shoots really, really well. So if you guys remember Neil McLean, uh, former SEAL, uh, he's been on the channel with us a couple of times of McLean Core Industries. That's the, uh, the sling that he makes, which I'm a big fan of, run it on my Mark 18. Uh, he was actually issued, uh, or they at least had some, I don't know if he was issued per se, but did have some time on the SCAR 20 when it originally came out. It was pretty much at that point in time, the Mark 20, uh, for your precision long range application version of the SCAR 17. That's really the big difference, right? He did say they had some issues, which they have since corrected, like for instance, multiple firings with one trigger pull. So you'd be aiming down range and you wanna get a shot on your target, you'd slowly squeeze the trigger, pow pow. Well, I didn't mean for two rounds to go down range. I mean, I guess that's pretty, not, I mean, if you don't want two rounds going down range, you shouldn't have two rounds going down range, right? So that was something that they were running into an issue with, but apparently it's been fixed and we haven't had any of those issues with the SCAR 20 in the civilian market. So cool. But the biggest difference really comes down to this rifle, the SCAR 20, its entire application is precision. It's the DMR, the, the semi-auto sniper that you would want. It's heavier, it's bigger, it's bulkier, it's got a longer rail, so that way you can put in bigger optics, you can do clip on night vision, obviously run a bipod a little bit further out, any other types of grips that you want, obviously we've got the Tango down grip here. So yeah, it makes sense as to why this gun is more of a long distance performer. This, a eight pound rifle, and out of the box without optic and all that type of fun stuff. This without optic and all that's about a 12 pound, 11 and a half pounds. So yeah, it weighs a little bit more. And when you think about that, lugging this around compared to this, yeah, I think I'd take my chances with this guy and maybe the Trigicon ACOG or whatever other type of optic setup you want. But again, you want that accuracy at greater distances, reaching a thousand yards plus, you're gonna have better luck with this one, the thicker barrel, the, the chrome lined cold hammer forged 20 inch barrel uh, over a 16 inch barrel. It's just, that's just naturally how it's gonna go. And then a few years later, they made the 6.5 Creedmoor model, which as big of a fanboy of 7.62 NATO as I am, there's no denying that 6.5 Creedmoor does have better ballistics downrange. You wanna shoot out past a thousand yards and still carry a punch, 6.5 Creedmoor will outperform 7.62 NATO. It's just the nature of the beast. We've done 6.5 Creedmoor versus 7.62 NATO, but in the civilian market, I'm still probably gonna run with 7.62 NATO for its availability and cost. And to be quite honest with you, I'm shooting out to 100 yards and it makes more sense financially to go 7.62 NATO. <laughs> but with that being said, if I didn't have to worry about that, 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay, cool. Now, how do they shoot? How do they feel? Let's take them down range and do that. It's a little bit lighter, so will I feel that recoil more? Absolutely, but let's just shoot and see how it feels, huh? It does feel good though. So yeah, 7.62 NATO, I mean, it's not like any joke by any means, it packs a punch. And in a rifle that weighs only about eight pounds or so, add the optic to it and a fully loaded mag, you might be reaching that nine pound area depending. But 
it really does feel great to shoot. The recoil impulse is nice and soft. You are gonna get a little bit of, little bit of muzzle rise as I exaggerated here, but it's easy enough to stay on target and to be able to get quick follow-up shots. But how does it compare to the much heavier SCAR 20? Let's find out. So the SCAR 20 coming in at about four pounds more, just under four pounds, that weight should actually help felt recoil, or you know, I guess you shouldn't feel it as much. Added weight typically is a good thing in that sense. Uh, and also partnering that with the two chamber Surefire Pro Comp brake, should be pretty noticeable at how much flat shooter shooting this is. So let's go ahead and just take a couple rounds down range and see how it does. Yeah, that sounds good. Obviously, I can get quick follow-up shots on it because I knocked down our target, but was it noticeable to you? To me, yes. Added weight, two-chamber brake, this is a really flat shooting gun. Also, coupling it with that Super Scar Trigger by Geisley, oh my goodness, getting those fast follow-up shots is easy for this gun. Granted, I have the bipod on there, which adds a little bit, a little bit of weight too, and the thicker optic. Man, all in all, this is a really a great rifle. So at what situation though, would I want this over the SCAR 20? Or I'm sorry, the SCAR 17? And well, the answer is, are you gonna be engaging longer ranges? And are you going to want more of a precise shot placement? If you want something that can kind of do the best of both worlds, well, I don't want to say the best of both worlds, but can actually dabble in both worlds. The SCAR 17 is going to be where it's at. I wouldn't want to be walking around in the woods like what I did in the uh, giveaway video for this. Uh, I wouldn't want to be walking around in the woods and then trying to engage up close targets with this rifle as much. The SCAR 17, that's kind of like where it's at. But I, did, but I do know if I was going to be engaging out to a thousand yards plus and I'm going to be staying stationary or maybe short distances of travel, the SCAR 20 seems like the more obvious choice in that situation. But again, let me know down in the comment section below which one is better suited for your needs or the application that you would prefer. Uh, but since I have one more mag on me and I really like shooting this guy as much as I do, what do you say we just finish this mag out really quick? Let's just see how fast I can clear, I don't know, 20 rounds with the uh, SCAR 20. All right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that feels great. I don't know if you can tell or not, really, but that has pretty much zero muzzle rise. I can still see my misses down range. I was shooting a little high, but man, that thing just felt great. Oh, love it. Also, this is our current giveaway, so head on over to classicfirearms.com or better yet, cfcontests.com to get your entries in on our SCAR 20 that you see right here. Chambered in 7.62 NATO with the Leupold 3.6 to 18 power first focal plane Mark V HD. The spur mount, AccuTac bipod, Tango down grip, 20 round mag. It comes with a 10 round mag, but Let's be real, 20 round mags where it's at, all right? Utilize the code word you see at the bottom of your screen to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. I'll see you guys down in the comment section below all about SCAR 17 versus 20. Which one would you rather have? <sighs> Number one common, the one that's free, like the current giveaway. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.